It's a cold morning here, but today's the day the glass is going in. I just thought I'd do a video before I get carried away and forget. The old skimmer's looking good. Happy with that. Got some ladders set up. Got all the insulation ready to go in after. The last bit of pipe work to come from the shed. Uh, I'm sure it's well, nice to get all the water out of the pond. I bucketed it all out and then the last bit, because it's so cold and it's frozen so it's easy to shove out. I built this frame up for the glass. It's just two, two by ones, or oh, 50 by 25, because that then will match that insulation. So the insulation will be there and the liner will be perfect across there and then stuck. It's 50 mil there for the liner to get stuck to. So my plan is to silicone all that. I've got CT1 for that, black. Silicone all the way down there, all the way around. Place the glass in. I've got some suction cups. So I'll probably put a ladder across the front there and some straps to tie it in. I've got some timber or something to rest up against it to hold it in position. Um, yeah, and then I can just insulate everything all the way around. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of a mess up here. I did this last bit of block work, it was about 10 o'clock at night and it started peeing it down with rain. Yeah. I'm about 10 mil out of level from the rest of it. Bugged me, it bugged me like mad the last couple of weeks and I've ummed and ahed about taking it all apart and redoing it but I can lose that 10 mil in the in the cement for the coping stones. Really, I should have had a, a really long level. I've done the whole thing just using a 1200 mil level. Obviously, it doesn't fit all the way across there. So. A note to others, get a long level. I think they do six foot level, it's like fairly cheap. Probably 30, 40 quid for a cheap one, but yeah. That, that'll be the height of my glass. Well, there we go. 10 mil or so there to get out. I said I'd be honest. <laughs> I really don't think it's worth taking apart. Uh, so that's where we're at. Got a mate coming over now. Hopefully we'll be able to lift the glass. It's really heavy. I think I'm going to lift, get the glass in and rest it on some insulation on here. And then one person can jump in and pull the glass back and rest the other end on while the other person jumps in. <laughs> Hopefully I won't be ordering another piece of glass at, by the end of the day. Uh, just fix one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen fixings in there. And then these uprights I cut really tight, you know, I have to bash them in with a hammer. And they've just got two fixings dead center in the middle of a brick, so they're good fixings. They're, they support weight downwards, really, not. They're never going to come out from the wall, so I didn't feel the need to put any more than two in each one of those uprights. <coughs> and as I said, yeah, 50 mil gap all the way around. So the distance between there and there is 1800. And the distance from there to there is 600. Mm. I did ask the guy who uh, supplied the the, um, the glass whether 50 mil is adequate, and he was, yeah, said that's fine. So by the end of the day, I'm hoping to get that glass in, all that insulation in, and the liner in, and the hose pipe in. So, glass is in. Two of us managed to get it in. Nice thick bead of CT1 all the way around the edge. And we brought the glass in, rested it on the piece of plywood on there. One of us jumped in, lifted the 
in a bit more. The other person jumped over, rested it in like that. Perfect. Um, I did have those two poles leaning up against there while we messed around with it, but <clears throat> I got the three suction pads now with the ladder holding it. Perfect. Happy with that. I've just put the carpet in and cut round the edge. Next is to insulate it. All systems go. I have one problem though, I've just read that this silicone, you shouldn't use it below 10 degrees. It's probably about 5 today, maybe. A bit more than that air temperature. But, I've got that big garden patio heater, so I'm thinking if I put that here, it'll be about 20 degrees, and I'll just leave it run for 12 hours. <laughs> it was actually here when I bought the house, it was left behind by the previous owner, so... Happy days. I'll show you from the outside. Break my neck getting out of here. Can't, I haven't got the privilege of going in and out through where the window was now. You can't really see it, it's a piece of glass. Happy days. Looks smaller in the video, but. Pretty impressive. To the naked eye. Yeah. Oh. The plan is to get that insulation in now. And then get the liner in. I can't see any reason why not. I feel like I'm a bit mad doing this in January, but... It's crack on, isn't it? Get the old water in and make sure all the filter is going fine and no leaks and before I know it spring will be here I'll be able to get some fish in there I think I'm really having a big push because I really want to get the pergola on for some reason I can't do that until those coping stones are on and I can't put the coping stones on until the line is in so go for it end up using two tubes of this to stick that in I'm guessing I'll probably only use two maybe three I'll put a bit more of this in than that that's really only just bond the glass it's not really a water seal whereas this is going to be the water seal that's going to go on the glass to stick the liner on so use a bit more of that Rubber gloves always a must, silicone, horrible stuff. Tiny little bit of gap there. I might pump some silicone down there. I left two or three mil gap either side, not really sure why. I think I just wanted it to definitely fit in there other than get the glass in here and it not fit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what I'm gonna do is I'm pump some more silicone in there actually. That's a good idea. Yeah. So any questions? Put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer. Dogs freezing, he wants to go in. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Too cold out here for you. <laughs> Mrs. is cooking bacon sandwiches, that's why he's crying at the door. 
All right, back in a bit. We're back. Insulated. Pretty straightforward. So I got the carpet in the bottom first. Cut it neatly round. And then just started insulating. I used uh, like the cloth gaffer tape. A lot of people use the um, silver insulation tape, but it's really thin. Whereas this cloth has got just a tiny bit thicker. I thought if there's any like imperfections, it'll just smooth them out. Probably make no difference, but I've doubled, double taped the corners. Gone round the old uh, skimmer box nicely as well. So I had the suction cups and the ladder on that side, with some straps, but after about three hours it fell off. So. The uh, silicone started to dry anyway, it's not going anywhere, so I'll just put these in for the time being. It's probably had four or five hours now. It's not going anywhere. Uh, there's not much more I can say on this part. It's pretty straightforward. You know, the cell attack is easy to cut. Nice and tight joints. Carpet in, just got in there with a hoover and hoovered the carpet. Pretty much ready for the liner to go in now. Well, I am ready, it's going in. <laughs> Last thing I want now is it to rain and fill up with water again. Could have set up like a time lapse of me doing it, but it's pretty boring, really. You wouldn't learn anything from it. So here's the box of our liner. That's how it gets delivered. Length, width, depth, plus a lip. A shout out to Kirky's Koi. Oh yeah, I got a few quotes from different places, but. Yeah, I was happy with that quote and the spec of the glass. Kirky's Koi. Quick Google search, you'll find him. Quite helpful, he supplied the glass and the liner. No dramas. Yeah. Got the box of our liner in. Just rolled it out in the inside. It's straightforward really. I suppose it's made to measure so wouldn't be hard to fit. Got the odd crease or two in the bottom but nothing major. And I seem to be like trying to get them out of one spot and get them into the other. I think they'll flatten out there like really nothing major. How long it's going to take to fill? I <coughs> just did a quick calculator calculation and uh, doing about a litre every 10 seconds, so that's 6 litres every minute. It's 360 litres an hour, so that's between 19 and 20 hours to get to the 7,000 litres I need. But I'm only going up to the bottom of the window. I fill it up to the bottom of the window. Make sure the line is all in, sitting where it wants to sit. And then I've got to get in and cut this liner for the window. 
and stick it round. I'm not looking forward to that, I'll tell you that. Freezing. Yeah. I've got wetsuit and wetsuit boots, but I'm really wishing at this point that I had waders. I just got in there with my shorts on and like shoes and socks off to get all the creases out the bottom and oh my god I couldn't feel my feet after about four minutes but ice blocks <laughs> I was gonna go with my shorts on Let's give that a miss not really interested in filling that though so I'll get back to you what's in there boy what's in there what's in there be his new water bowl. Guarantee it. He drinks out of that. What's in there? Fish. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So, while well, this is filling up, do a little video on the pump. This is a Evolution Aqua. Very pump 20,000. 190 watt. 20,000 litres per hour. Yeah. Just put this hose connector on and chopped off a bit to the, make it the right size. Size that I need for that 40 mil pipe. And my plan for now is possibly I'm going to have a retrofit bottom gym but for now I'm just gonna put this pump down in that corner and flexible pipe up to that in that there nice and simple so, that on there that on there got some jubilee clips so there's a few different types of Jubilee clips you can buy. There's the normal type. I just found these ones. I couldn't find the normal type. And then I was like, I don't know which ones are better. So I got all three. Thought I'd have a go at all three, see which ones are better. The best. Yeah. And this pump then has got a controller that will be in the shed. Um, so you can turn the speed up and down. It's got plenty of wire on it to go back to the controller, so all the way back there. Um, yeah. So get in there. I suppose though now once, because it's quite cold, once I start that pump and fill all the system up with water, it's got to stay running then. Well, it'd just be good for it to run. Well, I can't put anything in it for a while, but if there's any issues or anything, at least I can sort them out now. Then. Supposed to be really good pumps, these. We'll see. So, busy day today. Thought I'd end the day with the video back in the shed. So, as you can see, some new lights. We've got some power. Let's put a big row of sockets up there. I've got two armoured cables to come from the house. Well, they're already from the house, they're coiled up next to the pond, they just need to come down a bit further and get glanded into that junction box. That'll all be wired. Temporary at the moment, running off an extension lead. <coughs> uh, got the Vary pump controller. The UV Vary pump controller. 
and then that one's the pump down there for emptying that's the light um, yeah someone on my YouTube channel is asking about the filters got loads of media got a hundred litres of K plus K plus K plus Let's see if I can focus on it and so this is K this is K1 and this is K plus K1 K plus so I reckon this filter is to like 50 micron so I was thinking about putting this K1 in the first barrel take out the big stuff and allowing some of the smaller stuff to get through to this one which will be full of the K plus so K1 barrel number one K plus barrel number two and then more K plus in barrel number three that's the moving bed because this holds the most it's got the most surface area for the bacteria again this is all new to me so comment if you've got anything to add or yeah big old bags I'm probably gonna need another bag of something but lots of people recommend 50 litres per barrel but the people that have recommended that to me have got the 200 litre barrels not the 150s so I don't know you know I've look at that bag and picture it in that barrel I'm thinking it's gonna be a good bit in there well well, especially these two where the water lifts because it's semi buoyant the water lifts the media so most of the time half of it is out of the water so it seems kind of a waste to put the whole thing in that one another hole in that one so I may put a whole one in there because it's moving bed and then I might split that one to there and there to start off with 25 litres in each Let's see how it goes I might end up taking the 25 litres from there putting it in there and adding K1 to there we'll see but yeah uh, for some people that don't know how this my setup will work as a lot of you do know but. so the media sits in there the water comes in here rises up through the me media and the media traps any is the mechanical filtration so it traps any anything that's in the water and then clean water flows over the top and round into that one where that process is done for the second time before moving into the moving bed which is the biological filtration um, yeah So I've got one other issue today is it's just the temperature and I'm a bit worried about that gold gold label um, this gold label it's supposed to be the the best stuff some people are saying they've been using CT1 but I've seen the odd comment where CT1 hasn't worked as good as this so I'm going for this but it says 10 degrees oh, well, do not use below 10 degrees uh oh and it's definitely colder than that here so but I've over ordered on the insulation boards I've got about one and a half one full board and half a board left so what I might do is cut it and build a frame round the round the window if that makes sense and um, put I've got a little 
anti-frost heater. It's like a 500 watt heater just to keep frost out of a room. It's tiny. So I was thinking I could put that in there and build an insulation cover, Celotex cover over the whole thing and just leave it run, let it tick over for a few days. I filled the pond up to the bottom of the window now. It's about 800 mil of water in there, sitting about that far under the window. So I'm thinking, get in it in the morning. Silicone the glass in, silicone the liner to the glass. Build my frame over with Celotex. Pop the little heater in there. Turn the thermostat right down so it just ticks over, preferably above 10 degrees. And just leave it at that temperature for it to cure for two days. Well, maybe even just 24 hours, but it's definitely hitting zero degrees here at night. Definitely. So it's a worry. But fortunately, I've got, I've over ordered on the um, insulation boards. Nice one. Right. Might upload this video now and then uh, call it a day. See you later, guys.